وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم بسنتم الدين اما بعد ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا واجتنابه اللهم انا نسالك خير ما سعدك عبدك رسولك نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم انا نعوذ بك من شر ما سعد بك عبدك رسولك نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فاجا بعد ذلك الاسلام Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. It is a honor and pleasure to be back again at MCMC almost after I guess 9 years. As I used to live in New Jersey, I left for Pakistan and I was in Pakistan for almost 9 years and came back. How many of you remember me from the previous time that I used to come here? So so I know how much this community has grown. It's a few hands. that shows that this community, mashallah, has grown by leaps and bounds. It's a beautiful sight to see the new building. I know when I was leaving in 2009, uh, at that time the building was not there. It was just a parking lot and the houses were not born or uh, bought in that area. So mashallah, uh, congratulations to all the community members for building such a beautiful masjid and a very generous community. The next question, my is how many of you heard of Hackettstown, New Jersey? Oh, well, few people know Hackettstown. How many of you have heard of Islamic Society of North Jersey? A few people. This is a masjid that is very close. To, how many of you love going to ski? You love going to ski? Anybody likes going? Very few people love to go to ski. Say so you need to ski more. <laughs> so if you're going to Pocono Mountains on 80 West. Please stop by our masjid, we'll give you free coffee, free donuts, and some free chai, inshallah. It is on 80 West, exit 26. Small masjid, small place, probably a quarter of this uh, masjid. Uh, but inshallah, we are growing, and that is where I am. Uh, it took me about 50 minutes to drive this morning. So, uh, excuse me if I fall asleep because I'm awake since 4.30 in the morning to be here on time. Or I am today, <coughs> are from Surah Furqan, Surah 25, uh, the last ruku from verses 63 to the end, which Allah talks about the Ibad Rahman, the slaves of Ar Rahman. When Allah says Ibad Rahman, Ar Rahman is Allah SWT, is his sifat of being the merciful and the generous Allah SWT. Ibad Rahman means slaves of the merciful. Those people who know Allah SWT and love Allah SWT and they are devoted and dedicated to Allah SWT therefore they adopt these qualities amongst themselves in order to establish themselves as Ibad Rahman Abd as we know means slave so Allah SWT says who are my slaves what are their qualities what are they supposed to have in their life in their character this whole portion of Surah Furqan is about akhlaq, character, behavior, personality traits. There are about nine of them, as some ulama have counted over here, and some who have said there are even twelve, if you count the three mentioned in one ayah separately, then it becomes uh, eleven total. So therefore, it is upon the ayats that we see, uh, and depending on the time, if we are able to finish all of them or not, Allah SWT mentions وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَ وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا The first ayah has two sifat or two traits, characteristics. The first one Allah SWT is saying that the slaves of Rahman you can detect, you can recognize them just by the way they walk. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ Masha yamshi means to walk. So they walk on earth, how? Hawna, with tawadu, with humility and humbleness. And that is why it is mentioned in the Quran in many other places that wala tamshi fil ardi marahan. Do not walk on earth with arrogance, with takabbur. In nagalan takhlukul jibal, you do not create the mountains, you don't create these beautiful creations of Allah meaning what are you 
being proud of or arrogant of while walking on earth. And that is why this, uh, what is this walking of humility? Is it walking with shoulders down? Or is it walking crooked? Or is it walking up straight? The best we understand is the walk of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Imam al-Tirmidhi in his kitab Shama'il al-Tirmidhi, he has narrated some riwayat about the uh, walking style of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he would not be walking with drooping shoulders, like as if it's a sick person or a very old, lethargic person walking. Nor would he walk with his chest all stretched up apart, as if somebody was walking in arrogance and insolence. But rather, he will have yaksifi mashrik, meaning he would have a moderation and balance in his walk. And that is the walk of Ibadur Rahman, that balance and moderation walk, meaning neither it is stretched up totally, nor is it drooping down, but rather in a middle form where it is a person can say that they are walking with humility and understanding that Allah SWT. Because sometimes uh, people misunderstand thinking that humility and walking in humility means that you walk with your head down and you're totally shoulder down and you're like crooked. <laughs> it reminds us of a time of the Khilaf of, Abu, of Umar ibn Khattab. There was a boy walking very, very slowly. So Umar ibn Khattab grabbed him from the back and he said, Malaka, what is wrong with you? Why are you walking like this? Are you sick? Are you sick? Are you sick? You walking like this? Are you sick? He said, no, this is what Allah SWT says. He said, no, this is not the thing. You have mu'min, a believer, does not walk in such a way that it يَبْدُوكَ أَنَّهُ مَرِيبٌ That it feels as if that person is sick. You know, when we are sick, how do we walk? We walk in a kind of weakness. And that is why he is reminding uh, Umar ibn Khattab to this young boy that walk with simplicity, but walk up straight, looking with the eyes side down, but the face up. So that at least a person knows that who is coming. And that is one of the first sifa or first qualities of the slaves of Rahman that they do not uh, try to show off and boast and brag just from their walk. That their walking style, what is that lifestyle of their walk? Is that it is a kind of arrogance or is it a time of, of understanding of Iman and humility? And then Allah SWT says in this ayah, the second quality, which the first quality has to do physically, with the physical activity of the body, movement of the body, walking. The second quality that is mentioned in this ayah has to do with another faculty that Allah has given us, and that is speech, kalam. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And when the jahil, the Arabic word jahil literally means someone who is ignorant. It does not necessarily mean that it is illiterate person, but they are ignorant. They're ignorant of the laws, they're ignorant of the etiquettes, they're ignorant of the manners, they're ignorant of the ethics, they're ignorant of the morality, they're ignorant of many things and rules and regulations. Hence, therefore, they are not aware of how to address people because of their ignorance. So Allah SWT says, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ And here the dhamir is for the ibadur rahman وَخَاطَبَهُمْ whom here means the Ibadur Rahman. So when a, when a Abdul Rahman, when a slave of Rahman is addressed by an ignorant person who is not aware of the rules and regulations and laws and ethics and morality, what does that mean? That they will be talking to them in a very arrogant, immoral, immodest manner. They might be shouting, screaming, yelling, raising the tone and pitch of their voice, the tonality. So they may act in a very erroneous and erratic fashion. They may talk to them in a very, very demeaning and degrading way. So what do the Ibadur Rahman do? They say, Qalu Salam. They say Salam. Now here the Salam has two meanings according to the ulama tafsir. Awalan, the first thing is that you know, it's like the American slang, they say, peace out. The moment you see somebody is quarreling with you, arguing, you say, I'm out, peace. Salaamu Alaikum, and you start walking. You do not engage further, 
you do not talk further. Knowing that this person will get into an argument with me, I might lose my temper, I might get angry, and I might say something is going to hurt me and them also. So you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and out. That is one of the meanings of qalu salam. But the other and the more prominent meaning is that they have hilm, they have forbearance and patience. They listen patiently to the person who's talking to them in a very arrogant, erroneous, erroneous and erratic fashion. And they don't stoop down to their level to reply to them in the same way. If that person is raising their voice, this person, Abdul Rahman, is not. If that person is using foul language, this person does not use foul language. If that person is using hand movements to show their uh, arrogance and anger, this person does not stoop down to the level. Rather, they are fully calm and composed and talking to that person with peace and tranquility, with such serenity that as if not even a stone is being moved or not even a leaf is moving, that is how much calmness and soothingness is in the Abdul Rahman. And you can see it on the street. On the sidewalk, somebody is like talking to somebody and their hand movement is there and their facial expression. I mean, I don't know how many times you observe people on the streets, but if you park, if you stand at a traffic light, the right is left, and you suddenly turn around, you see in the car next to you, there are two people who are really talking, but their hand movement is going on and their facial expression is frowning and all that. You can tell that they're not talking about love. They must be having an argument. And they must be having a fight. That's why so much, even the car is shaking because of their communication. So when you observe people in public, in society, you can decipher and deduce and infer a lot of the things that they, when it talks about their character, their personality, their behavior. So if you're walking by the sidewalk and you see one person talking so emotionally and the other person very calm and listening and responding very quietly, that is the Abdul Rahman. When the jahil ignorant talk to them in a very erratic fashion, then they say to them calmly and peacefully, they counsel them, they talk to them, and they keep trying to a certain extent until they know their limits. Because everybody has a certain limit of patience and forbearance. They don't have unlimited. So when they know they're reaching the brim of their patience and they're about to burst, that is when they depart and they say, Salaamu Alaikum and move on because they don't want to further engage with the jahil to lose their coolness and lose their humility and humbleness because again at the end of the day they are Abdul Rahman. So Allah SWT tells us very beautifully that these two characteristics are physical characteristics. You can see them from their words, from their talk, you can see them from their uh, action, the way they are walking, and they were, and the way they are engaging with somebody. And you know what, brothers and sisters, brothers, the most important thing is when somebody is talking to somebody, which organ are they using the most? The tongue. I thought somebody would say kidneys, eyes, ears. Tongue. Look what Allah says in the Quran about the tongue. Who taught us to speak? Come and answer people give, my parents. Yeah, they were a mechanism and a vehicle, a means to teach us how to speak. That's what we say, mother tongue. But who really taught us to speak? Who gave us the ability? Do you know, they, have you met a person who's mute? Gunga, you know, mute. They have a tongue in their mouth. If you say, open your mouth, ah, yeah, there's a tongue. But they cannot speak, they use sign language. So there are a lot of people on the face of this earth, they have a tongue, they cannot speak. So that tells us, it is Allah SWT who has blessed us with this most powerful tool, the faculty of speech. Allah says in Surah Rahman, Our Rahman, Allam al-Qur'an, Khalaq al-Insan, Allamahu al-Bayan. Allamahu al-Bayan. Allah taught insan the bayan. The ability to speak. Subhanallah. Allah Himself is saying, I am a Rahman because I gave you the Quran. I am a Rahman because I created you. I gave you life. You could have been dead, born dead. Something called stillbirth. It's a medical terminology, doctors know that. And the UN Foundation for, Human, uh, for Children also knows that. There's a statistics of how many stillbirth 
in the world happen on a daily basis. There are thousands of children born every day as we speak on the face of this earth who are born dead, stillbirth. So the biggest gift of Rahman is life. He gave us life. We could have been one of those numbers. We could have been one of those people born dead. And then when he gave us life, <laughs> he gave us the ability to speak. Because this tongue is so powerful, it can tear through people's heart, penetrate through them, and rip it apart. Or this tongue is so powerful, it can mend broken hearts. Broken people, separated people, people who have stopped talking to each other for not just days and weeks, but years and years and decades. You know, we come from a South Asian culture, you know, in a South Asian culture, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, we have this family feud. And cousins or uncles and aunts are not talking to each other for Allah knows how many years. Every Eid, every Eid al-Adha, Bakr Eid, we are not going to see them. Why? Because our family is not at talking terms with them. They see them on the streets, they see them in the neighborhood, they see them in the area, in the city, they see them in the masjid, but 